So let's maybe start talking a little bit about, um, and we'll get into batteries a little bit later, but we'll go through the order of the consultation brief. Um, in the consultation brief, you guys mentioned um, that your desire is to have mostly a DC base boat. Yeah. You want to elaborate a little bit on what made you decide on that? And uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about what, why you're leaning that way. Um, mainly because AC is really power hungry and um, it depletes the batteries pretty quick. Um, we are space limited, uh, so we cannot have uh, too vast of quantities of batteries. Um, so that's mostly the line of thought. And we, and just it, it, many things are our philosophy of cruising. Um, we don't need an electric coffee grinder. Uh, we are happy to grind our coffee manually. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, we have that sort of approach to things. Um, we might do laundry in a bucket. Uh, we don't need a washing machine. Uh, we, we don't need too many conveniences from AC power. So that is why we mostly want to have a reliable DC system. So nonetheless, we are thinking of including AC, which is primarily for the laptop, for example. But I mean, that takes 140 watts. Uh, so it's not it's yeah, still not really making it an AC boat in any means. Um, mm -hmm. In my point of view, it's not, we're not talking 3000 watts or even multiple of those. That's right. a bit the philosophy. But where some of the questions and confusions come in is from my understanding, and this is where we'd love some clarification is like, once you bring AC on board, you have increased risk of electrolysis and stuff without galvanic isolators. And yeah, we'll talk about that. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so you're right. I mean, the point is it's hard to avoid AC altogether on a boat. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's not that it's not doable. Um, so, you know, at the very least, most people will have uh, a 120 or 220 um, AC circuits uh, for either a battery charger, right? The ability to recharge the batteries when you're connected to shore power or for some of us that have an onboard generator, which is very few, but some of us. Um, so for the one, for those of us that don't have a generator at all, not DC or AC, then, you know, being able to connect to shore power and keep your batteries maintained um, is pretty desirable. And so, and you highlighted that too. So I think for sure we want to include a battery charger um, and that's one reason to have AC. And then the other one would be uh, some, some folks will install a sort of a hot water uh, tank. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so if they want to, maybe when they're connected to shore power, the ability to warm water. So that's one thing that some people do pretty common. Uh, many people when connected to shore power like to have the benefits of a sort of maybe of a five gallon, 10 gallon uh, hot water tank. Totally. That it, that's heated from uh, shore power. Totally. I hadn't even thought of that. Yet. No, That's yeah. I, I have it in my. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's not a big ticket item. Uh, I would say ninety nine. I don't even know a production. All production boats have it. It's you know sometimes the water where in different places can be pretty cold on the hands. Like here in the Pacific Northwest, even in the summer, um, you know the water can be pretty cold. It's not seventy or eighty degrees. You know, so um, and shower same thing. So that's something to consider. And then the other thing too that you had brought up in your consultation brief, and I think that that's something that even if you don't think you need it, I think it's a good idea to have it, is to install AC circuits um, or outlets in different parts of the boat. At least pre-wire the boat for that. Um, and again, there are places, especially if you don't change, uh, you know, sort of voltage source uh, frequency, right? Because as soon as we change, we go to Europe or we go someplace where everything is at 50 Hertz and then you go to someplace where it's 60 Hertz, that's really where things complicate. It's not the voltage differential that's a big issue. Um, it's the frequency change. So for the two of you, and you did highlight that, it probably makes sense to have um, all the AC outlets inside the boat to be to one standard. Let's say, for example, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on when we talk about inverters, uh, probably 120 volts, you know, uh, 15 amp receptacles. And to have those located maybe in a few places throughout the boat, right? Generally, you would see that one in the galley, 
you might see one in a cabin, uh, one beside maybe a chart table uh, for charging laptops and stuff like that, and potentially another one in the galley, and uh, not galley, but in the head. Okay. So, and these are these outlets would only work when plugged into shore power, or these are powered by an inverter. It all depends, but that that aside, generally, um, you would be recommended to wire in some of these because it's pretty standard, right? Um, you don't have to, but there are reasons for why you would want to do that. And then you would run those circuits back to the panel and then, and then you have the ultimate choice. You know, do you want to run those circuits only on shore power or do you want to run some of them on shore power and inverter, right? So you can do both. Mm -hmm. Um, there are, again, because this is where your journey is a little bit different than many others. The fact that you're going to be changing um, destinations um, where, you know, leaving North America where things are not necessarily going to be 120 at 60 hertz, this is where it gets really challenging, right? Mm -hmm. um, and generally, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but where many boaters decide to have a simplified system is to have a battery charger be the only device that is connected to their shore power system. So yeah. effectively, um, you don't even buy an inverter charger anymore. You buy an inverter only, uh, which always outputs 60 hertz because inverter chargers cannot, unlike battery chargers, and this is, you'll see, this is the win. A battery charger can have an input range of let's say 90 to 250 or whatever it is, and also have a frequency variability. So it'll take both European power or North American power. And that's the beauty of having a single battery charger uh, connected to your shore power system. Mm -hmm. And then what you would do is you effectively create an island where your inverter is the only device that powers all the AC outlets on your boat. I think that's and, what we were considering. Well, that's what I was comparing. Most, I, yeah. I, I drew like six different scenarios that would be possible. Um, but the two that I'm leaning towards the most is the one you just named. And the other one, though, that I'm also tempted by, the only reason that I like it less is because it adds less redundancy, but it adds less components and therefore simplicity. And that would be instead of a battery charger, which accepts both voltages and both frequencies, is to install, for example, Victron's MultiPlus, which is an inverter charger. And correct me there, um, but if you know the unit, from what I understood, is um, it, it can accept um, also both frequencies and both voltages? No. No? No, you choose one or the other. Oh, uh, you choose... One or the other. I thought yeah, they have, they have, connected. they have inverter chargers that are 22050. They have inverter chargers that are 12060. But you can't, it does not, and this could change, right? I, the world is, there's nothing categorical unless you're probably the product manager. Uh, but to my knowledge, um, that does not exist. You, you don't have an inverter charger uh, that enables you to change the output frequency. Not the output, uh, but it allows both inputs. That was my understanding. No, that's mm, my okay. understanding is, is no. Okay. Um, it would be ideal. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's why people end up doing chargers and inverters. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you end up having um, a charger uh, on the AC side and um, everything basically is just about recharging the battery bank and you could be connected to shore power. And there's pros and cons of this. You could be connected to shore power, let's say uh, a 30 amp shore power, um, and you've installed, let's say, a big charger, a uh, hundred amp, uh, for example, maybe a hundred amp charger at 12 volts. That's probably going to draw 18 amps. So you're actually drawing about 18 amps right now from your 30 amp shore power. And um, <clears throat> now, that's 100 amps DC, so your inverter is going to maybe output, you know, maybe it's going to be able to run maybe a 7, maybe an 8 amp uh, AC load at 120, because you're never going to be able to run, you see, this is where it gets interesting, you'll never be able to run anything directly offshore power. 
So if you have a large AC load that you want to run uh, that exceeds your 100 amps of DC charging, then what you end up doing is you end up sort of like a little bit draining your batteries, right? Yeah. So, and that's okay because <clears throat> as long as over time that, that excessive load is variable, right? So you really think about it, and this is what's, I think, so attractive with this model is the majority of the time, you're not going to be connected to shore power, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's, there's many reasons for that. Um, financial is one of them. Uh, for many, many of us, uh, destinations around the world are not inexpensive. And it's one thing to travel for two weeks, as we know, and have a big budget because you go back to work and you're working for the rest of the year. But once you're offshore and you're doing it as a lifestyle, uh, connecting every day is uh, quite prohibitive, even yeah, for the no owners that we'll have. It's also another yeah. preference. It's nice to recharge here and there because at Anchor, you don't always get the perfect sleep, but it's also yeah. the preference to have the best uh, setup to stay um, at Anchor because, um, I mean, that is what we prefer. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's nice every now and then. Yeah. And so think about it that way. When you have an inverter-based boating, um, so when you're not connected to shore power, your boat is basically the way we want it, right? Uh, you have batteries. If you're going to run any sort of AC appliances on your boat, the only way of doing it, and it's a choice, is that you decide to turn on the inverter to power an AC appliance that you feel that you want to have run for whatever amount of time you feel you can afford to run it because your battery banks are essentially charged. Maybe you're underway and you know the alternator is running um, or maybe it's a sunny day and you're not really using a lot of power and you're like, well, why not use that extra AC power or battery power that we have to recharge maybe a laptop or run a power tool uh, or a power tool charger, for example, right? Those would be things that, uh, you know, some boaters would have, you know, maybe a drill, uh, a sander, you know, maybe something like that, right? That could potentially run off your inverter. That's the only thing we use it for at the moment. Uh, yeah. Charge my drill and Maya's laptop. Yeah. Uh, we have the smallest of Victron inverters and that's what it's for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> all right. So we'll park that. Now the downside of this is that, for example, here in the Pacific Northwest, if you had a, if you were going to run uh, an AC load continuously, like think about a heater, uh, a little small ceramic heater, and that AC load, you know, it's a small little uh, heater, and you can buy those at West Marine, and you can buy them everywhere. And maybe it draws, you know, uh, 10, 11 amps at 120 uh, volts. Well, that would not be possible. So all these boaters right now that are having heating systems on their boat and maintaining heat on their boat and they're drawing, you know, maybe 10, 20, 30 amps of AC current to maintain heat on their boat. Well, that, that sort of uh, usage would not work on an inverter based boat, right? So even if you were connected to shore power, um, <coughs> you wouldn't be able to exceed the output exceed you wouldn't be able to exceed the the draw on your batteries beyond what your battery charger could give you right mm -hmm. so it moderates your consumption yeah now one thing to think about Maya, and you brought that up originally and I, I think it's a good point you know in life it's really hard to build something for everything so what you want to do is you want to say to yourself okay what am i going to be doing for the next five ten years and i'm going to build an electrical system for that and when the boat comes back to North America, let's say it does, or it goes back to Europe or wherever its final sort of more like resting places for a longer period of time, then you can make changes, right? It's not hard to make changes. It's really not hard on the AC because everything comes to one place and you can just move it around. It's not that difficult. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's not like the DC, which is large cabling going everywhere. So what I always tell boaters is, yeah, maybe, you know, think about what you're going to be really doing with your boat most of the time for the foreseeable future. And if that changes, then we can deal with it later. And it's not a big deal to change because it's really hard to be all things at the same time. It's like an all season tire is not as good as a really good summer tire or a good winter tire. Right. And it's the same thing with our electrical systems. If you're trying to be everything, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. So any questions, comments on uh, 
um, the thought of having a charger connected. And now, of course, assuming that my understanding of the Victron products uh, is that an inverter charger to not have dual input frequencies and one single output. Because I think the challenge, and I've asked this question before, is that some inverters have what's called a pass-through function. Um, and this is where the inverter, and it's a good thing and a bad thing. So all inverters do this, or practically all the ones that I'm aware of, um, if they're inverter chargers, and even some inverters do that actually as well, is they're going to allow you to have an AC input and an AC output. And if the inverter is disabled, um, the AC goes in and goes out. But it's also monitored on the AC input, right? There's actually, if, if it's the wrong frequency or the wrong voltage, it's actually going to throw an alarm. Because the inverter has to make a, a decision. Am I going to take an AC input and connect it to my AC output? Or am I going to take what comes from the batteries and take the inverter output and connect it to the AC output. And that's a decision. And there's a relay that decides, oh, and the inverter's on, you know, take power from the inverter output. The inverter is disabled and we have, we're sensing a good AC on the AC input connected through to the AC output. Um, and having AC in to AC out allows the effectively automatic, not having to use rotary dials to go from if your boat is on shore power or if your boat is on um, inverter or if your boat is on generator, right? So it's a way for, to simplify the use of an inverter, um, manufacturers that have, have sort of involved, not even, well, maybe invented or provide this feature called the pass-through feature. Um, do you have questions or comments? Well, that, that was kind of the last system that I had drawn up um, where it, our system would have been using an inverter charger with the pass-through. So then we could have also had AC when at the dock and we could power like a space heater because it's not inverter only. Correct. But now I am questioning if uh, we want to go that route or not, um, because yeah, you said that uh, they don't allow dual input and that is what I had believed earlier. So yeah, I, I do, well, you'll find out, um, but that's one of the limitations, right? Yeah. Um, it's because of the pass through function. Um, the inverter only out, right? Only outputs one and then, but it can be mix match on the input. And so having one at 50, one at 60 is where I think the concern is, okay? Um, so a lot of boaters end up doing this way. And this is, would be a reason why when it comes to sizing a battery charger, you're probably better off getting a larger battery charger because it's really effectively also the only way um, that you can actually uh, recharge your battery bank to allow you to even when you're connected to shore power, right? Because everything else would be always powered through the battery bank, either via an inverter or direct uh, to your loads. Yeah, do you understand? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, and that's why let's maybe talk a little bit about, oh, and you mentioned something, uh, maybe also I should bring that up. I hide highlighting the consultation brief. You had mentioned that uh, in your previous boat, you had an AC panel with a reverse polarity light. Uh, can you explain to others why you think that's an important feature? Ooh, I think you'd be better at this. <laughs> All right.